Okay, and then I want to ask about the, uh, I believe it's the Rubin Observatory that's kind of doing the whole like survey type of thing, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a new observatory that's being built right now in Chile. Um, It's the Vera Rubin Observatory, so it was named after the woman who discovered dark matter. And it is a little bit different than the telescopes that we've been talking about, because we've been talking about telescopes that you apply for time on and you go to, and the telescope would sort of be handed over to you for a night to observe the list of objects or the pre-approved plan that you had. Um, So the Rubin Observatory is going to follow a sort of preset plan right from the get-go. It's going to slowly survey back and forth and take pictures of a huge swath of the sky every night over and over again for 10 years. And that's going to be what it does, is just survey the night sky. And the amazing part of that is that it's going to effectively have built up a decade-long movie of the sky and anything that's changed in it. So it's just taking pictures over and over again. It sounds very simple. It's actually been an immense feat of engineering to build the telescope and of sort of data design and computer science to get it operating. But what it'll wind up spitting out is this amazing way of tracking anything that's changed. So an asteroid that's moving across the sky will see if a star gets brighter or dimmer, if a star explodes or disappears, we'll notice because you'll see that tiny change in the night sky. And we've never had a data set like this before. So it'll be this amazing wealth of information on all these strange changes things in the sky that we can either study just using data from the Rubin Observatory or that we can go follow up using another telescope. So it'll be this Mm. just font of data that we've never had before in the field. Right. Yeah, that's so cool. So when you say it'll be 10 years, is that does it take 10 years to just kind of do one pass of the whole sky or is it multiple? It'll be oh, it'll be hitting the whole sky once every few nights. If it just did the whole sky once, it would be done in three days, but it's doing that over and over and over again for 10 years. So that's part of the appeal. And I think that was just the experiment design that the initial plan was, let's just take a decade and map the sky over and over and over and find everything that's changed. So um, just as one example, a great tool that this, a great thing that this can be a tool for is finding a supernova. So a star that's died and created this amazing fireworks show and then left behind something like a black hole. Um, Um, A supernova in another galaxy is actually really hard to spot. It basically just shows up as this little like bing, like this little extra point of light that gets a little bit brighter. Mm -hmm. And normally we find about a a few hundred of these maybe a year right now because you have to be able to say, oh, there's a weird little point of light in that galaxy. Was it there before? So you need multiple observations of the same galaxy. And the Rubin Observatory is going to have multiple observations every few nights. So right now we find a few hundred um, supernovae in a year. That's how many the observatory is going to find in a night, one single night, because it's going to have such an amazing buildup of data and just say, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. So we're honestly in the field getting ready for how we go from a time when we have a year to study those few hundred supernovae to when we get that many every night. It gives us an entirely different scale of data to work with. It becomes a really interesting computational problem, but it's super exciting because we'll have so many new discoveries to mess with. Yeah, you guys are going to have a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We're ready. (laughs) Man, that's crazy. That's like how, you know, how my I'm going through our old family photos and there's like six photos of my grandpa as a kid, but there's 6,000 of me. Like now we're getting Mm -hmm. to that point where you're going to have 6,000 or whatever, however, infinity amount of photos of the, the sky. That's so cool. Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is my dog, Murphy, and these are dog treats. Now I'll give Murphy one of these dog treats and all you have to do is press the like button. Just press that little like button right down there at the bottom of this video and this sweet, adorable, cute little puppy gets a treat. All thanks to you. All right, you did it? Okay, I believe you. You said you did it. There you go, Murph. She got that treat because of you. Now, I'll eat one of these treats and all you have to do is click that subscribe button right there, pointing to it. Just click that subscribe button, subscribe to Curiosityness with me, Travis DeRose. Get lots of good video, and I'll eat this treat. All right, you did that too? That's not very good. Bro, not very good.